quite welcome back and uh, we did not we were not able to get back to Dr. Yumna Hayek so I have to uh, say here that uh, uh, around uh, 14 billion pounds were allocated for the uh, charity uh, work and uh, there was a call by the president today on Tahir Masr uh, fund to uh, target the most vulnerable uh, families and to work uh, hand in hand with the alliance. The alliance comprises around 30 uh, uh, civil uh, society and NGO working all for the uh, for uh, uh, several uh, sectors, but the president today uh, spoke about enlarging uh, their contribution to fulfill other uh, sectors in uh, contribution with the government uh, um, and the uh, private sector, plus, of course, uh, uh, some of the other presidential initiatives that are occurring. Now we turn to our second uh, segment, and uh, we have with us uh, tonight uh, Dr. Hassin. Saint Salama, uh, Association uh, Professor of Architecture and Urban Planning. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. And we've seen uh, the unprecedented uh, turn for Upper Egypt, particularly during the very uh, few past years. The, and the last of which was the inauguration of the new Suhag city. Let me take here um, your assessment to the strategic significance of uh, the projects uh, that were inaugurated recently by the president in Upper Egypt? Uh, of course, as you mentioned, it's unprecedented and unprecedented in many ways in speed, uh, scale, the amount of investments, and also the focus, uh, because what we are seeing now is a more focus on human uh, development with all its dimensions. Uh, so yes, uh, there are huge investments in infrastructure, uh, uh, roads and highways, but also on the human level. So uh, social uh, aspects uh, in your previous uh, topic, you were talking about the involvement of the civil Society was NGO. I was just about to ask you about <laughs> yeah, this. Okay. Please go ahead. Uh, and and this is, uh, I think, new and and it it, it reflects uh, how the government recognizes the role and the critical role of the civil uh, society in de development. Uh, we we are seeing uh, initiatives like Haya Karima, for example, with huge uh, investments in Upper Egypt. Uh, emphasis also on economic aspects. So many of the projects that were inaugurated uh, last week uh, focuses on uh, economic uh, aspects in Upper Egypt, uh, many factories. Uh, uh, in different yeah, sectors. In, many indeed. different sectors. In, uh, indeed. Indeed, we've seen several uh, uh, um, complexes and uh, several uh, projects that were uh, inaugurated in different fields, also in, in many services, education and health and all this. If we speak about uh, uh, this point that you uh, uh, mentioned here and uh, the Civil Society Association, we are very much aware that the uh, decent life has been taking place in order to be able to cover around 60 million uh, people up to the, uh, up to this minute. Um, how do you view this kind of uh, or, or this work or this triangle of work that can really uh, be initiated between the government, the civil society, and the private sector or at once? It is very critical, and I think this is the model uh, we see in in many of the developed countries like the United States and Europe. Uh, this triangle, so the government uh, puts policies, uh, incentives, uh, lead initiatives, but uh, the, the civil society and the private sectors are the ones who implement uh, many of these oh. initiatives, especially on, on the educational level. Uh, so I am really glad to see what is called civil universities or universities that uh, are developed by uh, the civil society somehow. Uh, uh, a collaboration between the private sector and the civil societies. Many models are starting to emerge in Cairo on the level of schools or even universities. And this is, uh, this is a very successful model and I think uh, the government uh, should continue uh, supporting these initiatives and, and facilitating uh, 
uh, their work uh, in, in several aspects, uh, not only education, but even uh, uh, the economic aspects and the social aspects. Speaking about uh, urban planning <laughs> and getting back to what we were speaking about and um, uh, um, Upper Egypt. There has been a development not just in Upper Egypt but in many uh, governorates across uh, Egypt or in Egypt at large. Uh, when we speak about urban planning, let's take it first from this direction, and new cities. Uh, how inevitable such a step was? It was again uh, different because now uh, we are hearing uh, uh, government officials talking about quality of life. Uh, quality of life in urban development and this is something so the government is not uh, or no longer just focusing on providing the basic needs like infrastructure, water, sewage and that's it. No, they are working on enhancing the quality of life in, in cities, developing new cities. So New Suhag is one of 22 new cities that are currently under development. And uh, they well, call they are these... more than 22. Uh, oh. <laughs> but, but yes. <laughs> they so are far. increasing every... Uh, n more initiatives are in the process. And, and what is interesting about that, uh, we, we refer to that as the fourth generation of, of cities uh, because they include the uh, emphasis on, on urban qualities uh, that we might not see in other places. So it's not only providing people with housing or infrastructure, but also uh, cultural centers. So one of the projects that was inaugurated last week was a public library. Uh, it's, it, these typologies or types of projects are very uh, critical for community development and the, the, the sense of, of satisfaction and happiness uh, for people. If we speak about overpopulation, and overpopulation is a challenge that we are really uh, in need to uh, focus uh, on, but <laughs> since we're doing some efforts in from uh, another side, then we're speaking about confronting the um, internal migration, the uh, uh, providing job opportunities, and at the same time alleviating the standards of living as uh, uh, for people, as you respectively said. Um, how do you view the 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 work that was done in? or the developmental work that was done in the uh, urban community and the villages and some of the projects that were made uh, particularly by the Haya Karim or Decent Life Initiative. How does this emphasize the measures that are taken in this concern? I mean here alleviating uh, the, the standard of living, uh, providing job opportunities and at the same time confronted the challenge of overpopulation? Of course, uh, it is a challenge, especially uh, adding to that the, the, the current situation globally, which is uh, affecting uh, mm. uh, everywhere, including Upper Egypt. So Upper Egypt uh, economically uh, was uh, somehow depending on tourism, uh, uh, and we are seeing, of course, uh, or have seen during the corona uh, pandemic uh, couple of years uh, decline in, in that. Uh, luckily, it is picking up now. Uh, numbers are, are uh, increasing. Uh, but what is interesting about these initiatives is, again, it is uh, focusing on uh, enhancing uh, human uh, the human capital in in uh, in Upper Egypt. So by education and and by by projects uh, like what we have been seeing, petrochemical complexes, uh, electronics uh, complexes, all these uh, projects are not only uh, like upgrading the quality uh, of life in Upper Egypt, but also uh, linking. Uh, upper Egypt to the global economy and this is very critical 
uh, we live in an era of globalization and being part of that global economy is critical for any initiative uh, of development. So this link, uh, many of the complexes are aiming to export uh, products uh, abro abroad and this is very critical and I think Upper Egypt have, has the, the capacity to be part of that global uh, economy uh, and the more investments injected in, in, in the area, the more they will be capable of being part of that and benefiting, of course, of, the, of global investments. We are uh, now trying to extend the area that we are living in. We are aware that we've been living on the Delta yeah. uh, area and uh, we are just neglecting lots and lots of, our, uh, of other areas. Now that there is this geographical uh, extension uh, in order to find a kind of geographical justice <laughs> for the, uh, uh, for the uh, dealing with the population issue, how do you find that and um, how is that important for this upcoming stage for Egypt? It is very important uh, because many uh, areas uh, now that are uh, experiencing uh, intense developments like for example Al Alamein, Al Gidida or Al Galala are actually building on existing infrastructure that was there for years and it was really used for a month or two a year. Now the main objective is to, to, to build on that. We already have the infrastructure, we have huge number of housing, but there aren't enough activities or economic base that can bring people to these cities. And I think by projects or the approach that we are seeing in Al Alamein uh, or even Al Galala, putting universities as, initial, as the catalysts for, for development, in this area, I am sure uh, in two or three years, these places will be capable of attracting uh, people from uh, Delta and Cairo and other places and, and really spreading people across Egypt, increasing our uh, footprint. <laughs> or uh, the, we, we now live in six or seven percent uh, of the whole area and I think there is much uh, more uh, where we can expand across Egypt. Mm. You pinpointed your finger on a very important issue, which is uh, uh, work, and uh, we, uh, that we need to increase also uh, um, projects, and and and, um, and uh, we need to all, all focus on, on on projects. And that makes me ask about how building those cities, providing the uh, people uh, or, or, or providing people with new unit house that are beside projects that are initiated at the same time in parallel with uh, well, with the uh, housing units. We've seen the new uh, units in Sohag that were accompanied by, uh, by the uh, uh, inauguration of several other uh, projects also in Upper Egypt. How, how does facilitating uh, life and transportation and the existence of, of, of places to live beside uh, job opportunities can help for uh, the developmental uh, approach or vision that we are working on? These types of developments are offering uh, people living in Upper Egypt uh, alternative instead of moving to Cairo or to the north of Egypt. Uh, so if they find jobs, decent uh, housing uh, projects, uh, good schools, health care, uh, all these basic requirements, uh, they will simply uh, invest and work in, in, in these areas. What we have been seeing maybe for, for the last 30 or 40 years, people may be finishing their education in Upper Egypt and then moving north uh, for more job opportunities and more economic. Uh, yeah. 
Uh, but now if we uh, really intensify uh, projects in the south associated with, again, quality of life, mm. uh, residential, educational, medical, even recreational. So we are seeing in many of these projects, shopping malls, cinema complexes, all these facilities are critical for people to really uh, live there and it's no longer an industrial city. It's a city that provides all qualities of life in addition to industries. Mm -hmm. And this is critical. If we speak about decent life, and, uh, decent life is one, is one of the biggest presidential um, um, initiatives that is working for uh, providing villages with uh, with services, with projects, helping them, empowering women for some time. Uh, um, it's covering lots and lots of uh, families. Um, what is or what do we need beside decent life in order to be able to? Uh, alleviate the uh, living uh, or the lives of people in the villages? Uh, first of all, the choice of the name is, is really interesting because uh, it's open to all level of uh, uh, living uh, mm. in decency. And, and of course, they are starting by, by the, the the urgent uh, needs like uh, water, sewage, infrastructure, uh, helping people to to like upgrade their uh, homes or what. But also uh, there are investments, and this is very critical in education, healthcare, uh, human capacities. Like as you mentioned, empowering women by uh, micro industries, uh, training, uh, building vocational schools for them and this is very interesting uh, and it, it, it is happening in, in Upper Egypt and even here in many of the projects like Al Asmarat or uh, similar projects. So, yes, so all these projects include uh, vocational schools, the training centers uh, to, 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 to empower basically or mostly women uh, and of course uh, children. So this is this is and of very youth. yeah youth in general. Yes, uh, if I speak about uh, some of the other uh, uh, initiatives and how can they work all together for the same uh, uh, purpose? So we're speaking here about solidarity and dignity. And. Uh, uh, we're speaking about uh, the 100 Health Life. We're speaking about uh, several other uh, uh, initiatives concerning education and concerning empowering women. And how do you view how urban communities have been uh, uh, developed with such initiatives? Usually when we look at urban development, we look at uh, uh, several main pillars of development. Uh, so we have the, the, the knowledge uh, pillar uh, that covers all educational aspects, uh, training uh, and empowerment. We look at the social uh, aspects. So, uh, and, and we are seeing that in, in many projects focusing on, on social, uh, of course, equality, uh, enhancing social life uh, in places, uh, building uh, social networks for people uh, uh, in these communities, and also the economic, and this is very critical, and uh, we are seeing many of these uh, initiatives focusing on not giving people direct uh, economic aid or uh, but training them or providing job opportunities for them through micro uh, funds or micro projects and this is really critical and we, we have seen many countries 
that relied heavily, like China, for example, on that model, and many Asian countries on the micro uh, financing model. Uh, and, and these types of projects, uh, especially in Upper Egypt, uh, I think it will contribute to the uh, comprehensive development of the area. Uh, in addition, of course, to the urban part uh, being uh, city development, infrastructure. Uh, I also uh, have to mention the initiative that started uh, probably five years ago by the president uh, about branding Egyptian governorates and Luxor was the, the first uh, governorate uh, to. And this uh, really was a very successful, successful initiative because it focused on how to, to brand uh, a very valuable uh, piece of Egypt like Luxor and, and introduce it again in a new image to the whole world. And uh, of course, it started by, uh, or it covered many aspects, starting from the logo of the city up till what we have seen in, in the celebration, the avenue of Sphinx uh, celebration. So it, and many governors like Sharm el-Sheikh, uh, cities like Sharm el-Sheikh, Alexandria, and many other places are now doing the same, this branding uh, initiative. Dr. Hossam, uh, today we have had together uh, the inauguration of the president of this first uh, national alliance, or to this first conference of the National Alliance uh, for the Civil uh, Development Work. Um, and we have he heard the President speaking about lots of, uh, or addressing several issues. One of them is how we are confronting challenges that, uh, or we are paying the price of issues that we did not have real hand in that we are trying to confront challenges that we were not the one who made them. How do you view measures that we have been taking so far and um, the track that uh, we've been uh, passing by putting um, some of our uh, visions and continuing on with our vision even at the uh, backdrop of, of, of all the challenges that are occurring? I, of course, it's not one challenge. Uh, the, 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 we have been uh, going through that since uh, 2020, uh, Corona, yes. and, and then, of course, uh, the Russian-Ukraine war. But I think, uh, and I, we have witnessed uh, similar situations, but economic uh, uh, recession in 2008, 2009 globally. And I think countries that were able to prepare for the post-recession era were the ones who were really benefited uh, after wars. And I always look at cities, or, or Dubai is a very good example of that. They were hit hard by the recession, but they continued uh, investing in their projects because once uh, uh, the economy picked up again they were the first to to benefit and to to really play a role uh, in the new global economy so i'm optimistic i think uh, uh, we we shouldn't uh, put hold on 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 projects we need to continue because afterwards uh, we should be ready to, to, to attract uh, investments and be part of, of the new global system after the recession. What do we need at this upcoming stage? What do we really need? I think we need to focus uh, on projects uh, or, or uh, types of investments that can help us uh, attract what we call in urban development global flows. Uh, so uh, there are investments floating everywhere around the globe and if you have the, the, the capacity, the infrastructure, the, the opportunities to attract these investments, you will be a winner. Uh, there are people flows everywhere, tourism and, and billions traveling every year. And if you are capable of attracting, uh, we are only attracting eight or nine million 
uh, but we should be getting Actually, more. Actually, we reached 13 <laughs> in <laughs> 2019, yes. Uh, but we're, pick it, we're, we're just picking up to that. Um, um, of course, uh, as you said, respectively, we need to, to uh, 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 focus on attracting more uh, investments and tourists, why yeah. not? <laughs> Indeed. The, unfortunately, our time is out here, and uh, Dr. Hossam Hossein Salama, uh, Association Professor uh, of Architecture and Urban Planning, we thank you so much for being thank with us tonight. For, thank you. Thank you. Dear viewers, many thanks for watching, and uh, tomorrow will be another important debate with another colleague. Good night.